I will talk about uh, one peculiarity of human behavior, which I refer to as side bias. There are efforts and attempts made to understand human behavior through several subsystem. One subsystem referred to understanding human behavior through cognitive functioning. One subsystem is in the affective domain, we try to understand temperamental personality, mood and affective other emotional domains. Very little effort has been made to understand human motor action and the psyche behind it. My attempt here in this talk would be to understand a unique feature in human behavior, which is often noticed, but largely ignored. I will talk about that, but before I talk about it, I would like to refer that like human body, everything in this world is somewhat symmetrically organized. Even the human body is also symmetrically organized except for some visceral organs. From cephalocaudal directions, if you see a human body, you will find that you have got two legs, two eyes, two ears, two hands and morphological symmetry across the vertical line is almost perfected. Though there are attempts to study the structural differences between the two sides of the brain, the two hands, the length and width. All these things have been done, but it has been found that there are negligible differences in the structural issues in the two sides of the body. The question comes that whether the two sides of the body, if they are structurally so symmetrical, are they symmetrical functionally as well? I will refer about this question and I will talk about a topic, which is termed to me by me as side bias and side bias in human behavior. As I said, like human behavior, the entire world, all constituents of the nature have got some symmetry. A birds fly with two wings has a symmetry, a aeroplane in the sky that we see also have got a perfected symmetry. The river, the trees, the birds, the animals, anything that we see has got a symmetry in morphology. My question is addressed here on human body, that we have a perfect symmetry, but we have differential functions of those symmetrical, within those symmetrical structures, which are asymmetrical in nature. So, I would like to talk to you about these uh, asymmetries in our human function, which is largely ignored, but very often noticed. Now, before I actually go into the subject matter, as it has still not gotten a high level of scientific validity, though it is clearly evident, we would first like to examine whether our behaviors are biased or not. Let us for example, try to understand with two roads available before us, which one do you prefer to take more often? If I have got two roads in front of me, one going towards the left side, other going towards the right side but both reaching at the same point at the same time, if you take either of these roads, you would prefer to go by which road? Are you interested or are you more biased towards the left side of the road or are you more biased towards the right side of the road? We do not have a clear answer for this. Likewise, if I try to shoot with a gun, which I is kept open? and how conjugate eye movement takes place. Do we open both the eyes in shooting? No, it is not possible, we have to close one eye. So, which eye we would prefer to close and which eye we would prefer to open? We will find that there is often a bias, we use one eye more often as open and one eye more often as closed. 
if we have to listen a low voice a radio or the taking of a watch do we use both ears randomly both ears randomly no we use one ear but we know that preferentially one ear is more often used as compared to the other so we find often there is a bias if i have to board a bus i'll definitely not use both the legs i'll use one foot more often to board a bus as compared to the other if we notice to ourselves we will find that there is a clear bias within ourselves as well likewise when we take food or chew a gum do we use both sides equally when we do the mastication we do not do that we use one side more often as compared to other do we notice which side we use more often so the question comes whether mothers are biased in cradling baby or not we have often noticed that mothers cradle the baby in the left side the left hand and do we rarely see that mother cradle a baby with the right side what could be the reason behind it is it so that the mothers are biased i am raising these questions to generate more answers through researches the primary idea behind raising this question is to understand why our behaviors get biased under certain conditions likewise do we smell food with both nostrils equally no we do it with bias at one side of the nostrils so therefore we need to know why do we do this likewise which side of our face is noticed more often in a face to face interaction do we see the whole face at a time whenever we interact with somebody or we see one side of the face more often as compared to the other side at a later point of time i'll give you evidence telling that why one side of the face is more noticed as compared to the other why the right hand is used more often to take food we are often taking food with the right side do we take food with the left hand also with equal frequency no most of the people take food with the right hand of course there are people some people who also take it with the left hand but the percentage may be 5% or less than that with all these questions what i try to raise is that we have certain behavior peculiarity which we term in form of human behavior bias but why do we do that for such kind of action is something that we need to ask and when we ask this question we would like to find questions from evolutionary sciences from biological sciences from engineering sciences from behavioral sciences so the idea behind this topic is to raise questions rather than giving answers and by raising questions we would be able to get the root of human behavior through evolutionary sciences i'll raise more questions for that more such questions for biological sciences why they are biologically more tenable what kind of resource allocation i do through being uh, a biased uh, activity pattern what kind of engineering sciences questions that we answer and what kind of behavioral sciences questions that we answer by studying side bias as a phenomenon first we'll take up questions for evolutionary sciences the first and foremost thing comes to our mind that are we right sided since the beginning of the human civilization we know more often we use the right hand more often we use the right foot but the question comes are we right sided ever since the human civilization has begun or we became right sided at a much later point of time this question need to be answered likewise does sarish bias have a survival potential by being right sided do we increase the chance of survival or is it so that by not having a bias we will reduce our survival potential that is another question which revolutionary scientists can answer are women less lateralized than men is another question we have men and women in this world with equal proportions but is it so that men are more lateralized and women are less lateralized or the reverse is true we do not have a very clear answer we find that for various functions the laterality pattern differs between men and women but does these functional biases have got certain survival potential 
or certain implications for evolutionary sciences. Likewise, to what extent side bias is prevalent in human population across age? We have done a very recent study in which we have found that is appeared in uh, a journal called laterality. We have found that after a particular age that is 65 plus, the left handers are nearly non-existent. I will raise this issue when I will be discussing hand bias as one of the uh, issues that uh, we have studied under a department of science and technology program. But this question is being raised in order to tell that more we grow less there are left high sided bias people um, uh, when, when the human population is studied across the age. There are certain questions for social sciences like evolutionary sciences we have certain questions for social sciences. In this entire talk I will be raising only questions to find out answers because the answers are not very apparent or prevalent. So, the question for social sciences do there are more left handers in this century vis a vis last century. The latest study suggests that there is a there has been uh, an increase in the left sided people in comparison to the last century in this particular century. There has been such some such evidence, but no such systematic uh, answer has been found whether we have got more left handers in this century as compared to the last century. It has as I have said in last century we have found that there are less left hander and the number of people who are left handers in this century have been found to have increased. Likewise are left handers better than right handers in sports? We find that left handers are there in sports and right handers as well. But is it so that left handers shoot better or left handers have got a better performance as compared to the right handers? All left handers, right handers use more often the left handers in order to exploit the vulnerabilities of the right handers for left handers. That is another question which we for which we do not have answers. We have found a clear left hander in cricket, a clear right hander in cricket in the game of cricket use the left hand in order to bowl a right handed uh, or a left handed batsman. Why do they do so? Is it so that the left hand is used to exploit the weaknesses of the right hander or is it so that the left hander play better sports in all forms of or all uh, walks of sports that people are playing. Likewise, are there more left sided people with IQ over 140? It has been found that the, the percentage of people uh, with left hand have got higher IQ over 140, which is considered to be extremely gifted uh, number of cases. 100, 140 is the best or the highest that we can measure with the existing tools. There have been studies which, which are found that people with over 140 IQ have got more left, left handedness as a tendency as compared to the right hand, but we do not have a clear answer. This thing has to be studied. These are good questions for social sciences. What makes leftward people clumsy in India? For example, if a person is clearly left hander and since the social desirability is always for the right side, do they become clumsy over a period of time and do they commit more accident as a result of which? So, what makes leftward people clumsy in India because of social desirability or not having the left fit world around them for use of implements and other kind of activities. So, these are the questions we have found for the social scientists. So, like evolutionary scientists we have some questions regarding side bias in social sciences. Likewise, we have questions for biological sciences using side biases. Do there a genetic regulation for human asymmetry despite symmetry in nature? Everything in the nature is symmetrical, but do there a genetic regulation for human asymmetry? That needs to be studied. Likewise, is there a structural asymmetry in paired organ as well? Like we have got two legs, we have got two feet, we have got two ears, we have got uh, two sides of the brain is there a structural asymmetry in the paired organ? There are asymmetries existing, but as of now we know that they are very, very non-significant. Yet, it is important to study to what extent the two sides of the brain 
or the two sides of the uh, body are different in terms of structural asymmetry. Are the two sides of brain asymmetrical in structure and function as well? No, functionally we know that two sides of the brain are very asymmetrical, but structurally we know the right side of the brain is slightly bigger than the left side of the brain as well as left side has got more fiber concentration as compared to the right side of the brain. There are uh, minor variations in the two sides of the brain, but there are major variations in the functions of the two sides that needs to be studied in biological sciences, which of course, we have studied in great number and depth in the studies related to hemispheric lateralization or cerebral hemisphericity. Is there a common biological mechanism for all forms of side bias? This is also not very clearly known. For example, we know that the two sides of the brain are different for two different kinds of functional entities, but the two legs, the two hands, the two ears, the two eyes that is we have got sense organ asymmetries, we have got paired asymmetries for leg and foot, long limbs. Question comes whether there is one biological switchboard for all kinds of asymmetry or they are peripherally learned, separately learned through cultural processes in executing some kind of asymmetry. This is a question not yet answered and we need an answer for tomorrow. Are people with clumsy bias susceptible to developmental disorder or illness? That is also not clearly known. With Geshwin, Galabuda and Behan study, we know that there are some kind of atypicality or clumsiness in mental disorders like schizophrenia, some of the developmental disorders like dyslexia, mental retardation. All such studies are available today, but the linkage between this clumsy bias or atypical side bias and developmental disorder is also not very clearly known. So, what question comes that with all these raising issues, the biological sciences can approach side bias as a topic to answer several such questions. We have some questions for engineering sciences as well. For example, do we design machine for right siders only? We know that 10 percent of the people in this world are uh, left sided, left hander, but all machines are generally created for right sander. For example, the, the mouse of a uh, computer is meant for a right sider. The scissor is created or manufactured only for the right hander. A left hander will never find it very easy to use a mouse or a scissor. So, the question comes for engineering sciences, do we design machine only for right sided people? Does commonplace technology foster side bias? For example, if I show you some of the pictures, uh, you will find that a chair with right arm uh, meant for writing, there is a space meant only for the right sided people or the right handed uh, person. If the person is left hander, we will not be able to use the chair. A scissor for surgical purposes cannot be utilized by a left sided surgeon. A mouse is meant for the right handed people, it cannot be utilized by left handed people. The door of a refrigerator is always opened for the benefit of the right sided people. A thread of a screw is meant for only right sided people to push forward. It cannot be pushed forward with a driver by a left sided people. The camera, the snapper is always the switch is always at the right hand, it is never at the left sided. So, the left handed people can never make use of it. So, the question come with all these gadgets available in the world meant only for right fit people, what is the engineering challenges that we have for those tools which should be meant for both sided people or at least create some such machines which are conducive to the requirement of the left handed people. How far these tools may be customized? That is also a very important issue. Like in a aeroplane, if we have a left handed pilot, to what extent we can design a aeroplane cockpit for the benefit of the left handed pilot? How can we reduce the accident related injuries for people who are otherwise left sided, but been forced to become right sided to to, to accommodate the right fit world. That is a big question for all of us and we all know by developing atypicality, by developing clumsiness, we actually enhance the chance of accident. Likewise, should the measures of side bias be considered as potential for design of machine or even for robots? 
robots are being created keeping human asymmetry or human functional side bias into consideration? No. Or should we design the machine keeping the, the human side bias inherent uh, as an inherent potential into the system? So, all these questions that I have raised for engineering sciences, a mechanical challenge, a challenge for uh, different uh, devices uh, which we use in on a regular day to day basis. So, we have questions for evolutionary sciences, we have questions for social sciences, we have questions for biological sciences, we have questions for engineering sciences. Using the same concept of human side bias, how can we explain them? We find that there are side bias in sensory modalities. We, we know that we do not perceive information from both visual field equally. The, we have a tendency to look towards the left side more often as compared to the right side, because the left side dominance is found more for processing an image, but the right side is dominant for processing any lexical stimulus. This gets confused with the idea when we have got a scanning bias of reading things from left to right. Likewise, do we accept auditory cue equally by both ears? No, probably. The hemispheric, cerebral hemispheric functional asymmetry also come into picture when we get the auditory cue like a visual cue also. Do we receive tactual input from both sides equally? The two sides of the body tactually get input, but do we interpret them equally? No, there is uh, always a difference. So, there is a perceptual bias. Let me explain how this perceptual bias is seen. We found that left visual field is superior for processing image, but the right visual field is superior for processing words. We know that word processing is better done by the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain is better for processing image. So, when we refer about left visual field, it is actually dominated by the right side of the brain. And when we refer about lexical processing or words, we know that the other side of the, the left side of the brain gets dominant and the right visual field which is a contralateral connectivity towards the percept gets a better dominance. So, perceptual bias is inherent within our system in the visual field itself. Likewise, we have a dominant ear bias, auditory bias also within the system. The left ear advantage is always superior for understanding how you say, whereas the right ear advantage is always found what you say. So, the content is better understood through the right ear and the context is better understood through the left ear. And left ear has a connectivity contralaterally with the right side of the brain, which gives a better visual spatial information and a contextual information. Whereas, the right ear advantage is for more in the understanding of the content which is the lexical processing and better done by the left side of the brain, which is contralaterally connected with the right ear. Likewise, left hand is found to be superior with the pattern recognition, which is contralaterally connected with the right side of the brain and the right hand is found to be superior for the processing of the words, which is contralaterally connected with the left side of the brain. So, if we understand the perceptual bias, we will find that the visual processing the auditory processing and the tactual processing are somewhat organized contralaterally with the two sides of the brain. Likewise, we have got a bias in the face and face expression also. We have found that the right side of the face is more public as compared to the left side, which is more intense or private. That is, when we express a face and if we vertically uh, organize uh, or try to dissect uh, a facial expression, we will find that the right side can be controlled more often by the left side of the brain motorically and which is uh, uh, more often seen in any public viewing as compared to the left hemiphase, which is more private and not more often noticed by any onlooker. So, we term them as more private as compared to more public. So, there is a clear difference in the expression between the two sides of the face, the right side of the face and the left side of the face. There is a clear bias. Likewise, we have found that deception in facial expression is less likely in the left hemiphase. That is, the control in your left hemiphase is much less as your control on the right hemiphase. Therefore, people fail to make any kind of deception in the left hemiphase 
as compared to the right hemiphase. So, deception detection very easily if we can create a composite of left left hemiphase. We have also seen that the spontaneous expressions are less asymmetrical as uh, in comparison to those as intended. Therefore, whenever there is a deception there is a difference between of the two sides of the face, but if the expression is too spontaneous it is generally found to be less asymmetrical that is more symmetrical as compared to the one which is camouflaged or displayed according to certain rule. It may be intensified, it may be deintensified, it may be neutralized, it may be masked. Under all such conditions of display rule, it has been found that the left hemisphere is less la uh, lateralized, less uh, um, I mean uh, likely to be uh, controlled as compared to the right side of the face. We have also found that even the neutral facial expressions are emotionally cured, because we often with our embedded uh, experiences of emotion in face, the, the musculature get a permanent marking in the face and we have found that even with the neutral faces, if we create a hemiface composite with the left left composite and the right right composite using the same facial expression of neutral or resting state. The left hemiphase is found to be more emotionally cued as compared to the right one, because there is always some kind of permanent marking furrows and squints found available in consonance with the personality pattern of the person. So, in one of the studies we have found that if we create a facial composite with neutral faces and then create a left left composite and a right right composite. The left left composite is found to be more congruent with the personality predisposition of the person. The cultural display roles are also found to be more evident in the right side of the face, because we can control the right side of the face more often motorically by having a voluntary control with the left side of the brain. That is what we have mentioned that the right side of the face which is controlled by the left side of the brain display better culturally sensitive practices as compared to the left side of the face which is controlled by the right side of the brain. And also we have found that by having facial asymmetry we generate great interpersonal attractions. So, most of the attraction studies have found that there is a greater degree of morphological facial asymmetry which creates some kind of interpersonal interaction. So, we have photographs drawn from various sources in particular the studies done with the photographs developed by Paul Ekman and his associates. We have found that by developing composites of the same facial expression, there are differences in the expression. In fact, the middle photograph out of the three are the original expression. And then we have created left left composite and right right composite. The left left composite is on the extreme right side and the right right composites on the extreme left side. And you will find that there is a clear difference between the left left composite and the right right composite of the facial expressions. Even in neutral expressions as I have said that they are often cued, we have found that the middle photograph which is the original photograph by having a left left composite and a right right composite there are differences in the expression and the expression themselves with facial furrows and squints and other musculature changes. It is evident that the left left face becomes more interpersonally cued as compared to the right right faces. We have also found that when we interact in a face to face condition, the biases in the hemiphase and the biases in the hemispace also creates a very good interaction. As I said that the right side of the face is a more public face as dictated by Wolf in 1940s has gained lot of support from later experimental studies. Wolf suggests that the right side of the face is more public and the left side of the face is more private. Why is it so? Because our left visual field is dominant always for any kind of image processing including face. So, whenever we look at a face, we look at the right side of the face of the person whom we are looking, which is better controlled by the person through the manipulation of the left hemisphere motoric control. Therefore, all forms of social display rules come in the right side of the face. And we also have a tendency to look at the right side of the face as our left visual field is dominant. By doing that, 
we develop civilization process, we intend to filter those information with the person is interested in displaying rather than what expressions the person does have in its private life, which is dominant, which is expressed better in the left left side of the face. So, left left side is governed more by the right side of the brain, which is more emotional brain. So, in our face to face interaction, that is the interaction of hemi space and hemi face, we have found that we have a tendency to look at with a bias at the left side of the visual field, which falls the onlookers right side of the face. The interaction of hemi face and hemi space tells better that how the civilization starts with the understanding and filtering of the emotional cues that a person displays and the person understands through perceptual biases. Likewise, we have got hand biases as well. We have found that approximately 10 percent of the individuals are left handed. When a survey was done, a study was reported in science over 5000 years of artwork revealed that the right handedness is about 93 percent of all the cases in last 5000 years. This study was published in one of the articles published in science and it has been found that in almost every nut artworks that was uh, through artifacts, relics and other kind of materials. In the last 5000 years, the population which are found to be right handed are close to 93 percent. Even today, we have got close to 7 to 10 percent of the left handers in this population. So, hand bias is evident ever since the civilization dawn of the civilization. We have also found that the cultural norm determines the manifestation of the left handedness, especially for skilled activities. Some of the skilled activities are having cultural uh, practices, have got cultural norms. So, we continue to do it with right handedness and the manifestation of left handedness always have got some kind of social sanctions, social sanctions, particularly in cultures in the eastern part of the world. We have also found that natural left handers are more creative. We have also found that pathological handedness is higher in stutterer, deaf, schizophrenic and retarded disorders. But these practices, these evidences are cont contradictory in one sense that in some literature it has been found that left handers are more creative, they are found to be more uh, um, expressive, but at the same time left handedness has been found to be linked with some pathologies involving developmental disorders, schizophrenia and other kinds of diseases. We have also found that accident related injury is relatively more frequent in mixed, but not in left and right handed subjects, revealing or indicating that if a person is either left or right handed, the accident frequency does not increase, but if the hand dominance is changed forcefully in the course of development, then there is a chance that the people become mixed or close or clumsy. As a result of which, there is a higher incidences of accident under such conditions. In one of our studies uh, sponsored by Department of Science and Technology, we have found that in India, we have left handed about 3.4 percent, while world statistics suggest it is close to 9 to 10 percent. This is primarily because there are social sanctions against left hand use. Mostly, we in India take food with the right hand, do not use fork or spoons. Therefore, uh, and left hand is always considered to be dirty. In many ritual activities, we have been using right hand only. Therefore, cultural norms and sanctions are more prevalent with the uh, use of left hand. And it has been found that in women, it is far less as compared to men with an average of 3.4 percent. Left footed people are found to be however, 9.3 percent, because there is no such social sanction attached to it. Left eyed people are found to be close to 20 percent, 21 percent and left eared people are found to be close to 40 percent. So, the prevalence suggests that where there is less of sanction, there are more possibilities of having uh, left sided bias as compared to the right sided bias. We have also found that side bias is stabilized after young adulthood. After 17 to 18 years, it is stabilized and it does not change. Women are more right sided than men in all forms of side bias except handedness. Left handers have been found to have disappeared in very old age. There are two hypotheses uh, which are available in the literature and this literature 
these studies were conducted in Canada and US. There are two hypotheses has been proposed for this, one is the elimination hypothesis, other is the modification hypothesis. The modification hypothesis suggests that since it is a right fit world, the left handers are forced to convert or modify their behavior to suit the requirement of the right fit world. And the elimination hypothesis suggests that since the left handers found it very difficult to survive in the right fit world, they are eliminated following some kind of accidents or some kind of disease or injuries. So, either by elimination hypothesis or by modification hypothesis, we find that there are very few left handers in the very old age, they are either modified or eliminated. That is a hypothesis proposed, but this needs to be tested further, because there is no uh, strong evidence behind it. Though in India, we also have found there are very few left hander after 65 years of age. The socio-cultural pressure also does operate more with the children and women in India, less with uh, men. In men, it has been found that though there are close to 4 percent of the left handers, when they go to western countries, the percentage increases radically and it is close to 10 percent. So, India studying in India or India st Indian staying in India are about 4 percent left handers, but Indian staying in America or other western countries, the percentage is nearly doubled where sanctions are far less. And in India also, the children and women are more subjected to such social pressure, therefore the percentages are much lower for left handers in these countries. We also have got reading bias, likewise we have got hand bias, we have got face bias, we have got a reading bias also. We have a tendency to read everything from left to right, because we have a reading bias as well, but can we read things from right to left as well at the Urdu speakers. Do we have a attentional bias also as a result of our reading bias, that is we read everything from left to right simply because of our reading bias. These are subject of studies. Do we suffer from pseudo neglect under normal circumstances? That is, if we have to read something from right to left, do we suffer from some kind of pseudo neglect? That is also an area of study. Do artists use the input in portraiture that we have found? Artists often use in the study, in the great pictures in Mona Lisa we have found, artists often use this asymmetry in their portraiture also. But what does it imply needs to be studied further. Can you use this input in the web page making as well, it is a, it's a um, question of uh, in computer science as well, that do we use such kind of input when we frame or design or architecturally try to make it more understandable or conveyable to the understanding of human being. So, the question comes therefore, side bias in engineering sciences is a very important issue. For example, can we design rifle for right handers only? Uh, are we designing uh, rifles for right handers only? Can we do it for left handers as well? Because all rifles that we use, if we use it are meant for right hander, but if we use it with the left hand, the spent cartridge will come to the face of the person who is shooting. So, it requires altogether a different manufacturing uh, design for making it useful for the left hander. Can we do that? Likewise, should we have right handed pilots only? Because if the cockpit design is meant for only right handed pilots, what will happen to the left handed pilots? And as we have already noticed that left handed pilots are if not better than right handed are equally potential as compared to the right handed pilots. But are they in a natural disadvantage? Likewise, can we redesign the safety levers? All safety levers in all for example, locomotive levers, uh, locomotive engines are at the right side, but if we have a driver locomotive who is a left hander, he would never be able to reach that. Can we redesign it based on the requirements of the human capabilities? Is it possible to provide patterned information based on perceptual bias? As we know, we read most of the things from left to right, we have a scanning bias of image processing from left side to right side. Can we take this input in order to design our safety practices in the road? Likewise, it is possible to humanize machine with the matched asymmetry. We know that side bias is part of our system, is part of our functional system. Therefore, is it possible to humanize a robot or a machine with uh, the concept of the side bias? This is a question for uh, engineering sciences. Finally, such kind of research has got great relevance on all kinds of sciences as I mentioned. Survival mechanisms for example, we have found 
that fight and flight as well as communication pattern is based on the side bias practices. That is the right hemisphere is used more for fight and flight, the communication is done more by the left hemisphere. So, survival mechanism is based on some kind of hemispheric uh, uh, differences or some form of side bias. Likewise, effective coping style as I said private face is more dominated in the right uh, um, uh, hemisphere, which is portrayed through the left face. Likewise, public face is more in the left hemisphere, which is expressed through the right side of the face. The effective coping style also depends on some form of side bias. Resource allocation is also dominated by some kind of some side bias. In the waking state, left hemisphere is more dominant. In the dream state, right hemisphere becomes more dominant. So, not only in the waking and dream state, all forms of resource allocation in the body are also done by some form of side bias. Response selection is also very important. The left hand is always used for protection. Is it possible to understand why we, we fight with the right hand and protect uh, with uh, everything with our left hand? So, protection and attack mechanism, the response selection is very clearly defined in our coping style. So, that is also part of uh, one of the very interesting uh, evolutionary answer questions uh, for the answers uh, why we are so. Individual difference and genetic variations are also a area of study with the side bias that we need to study. And finally, the cultural variability, the, the left hemisphere is more dominant found to be in western population, whereas as compared to the western population somewhat higher level of right dominance is found in eastern population, some such studies have been published. So, the cultural variability is also evident in the side bias. Put together the relevance of research in side bias in all walks of life, in all forms of behavior can be studied using social sciences paradigm, using biological sciences paradigm, using evolutionary sciences paradigm and using engineering sciences paradigm. This gives a new set of questions for which we have got answers to bring. Thank you so much.